everybody. So this lesson here I'm going to talk about two really big theorems uh, that are applications of the derivative in calculus. The main event here will be the mean value theorem. So we're going to talk about first a, um, a variation of that. This thing is called Rolle's theorem. So we're going to read the statement, maybe draw a picture, uh, make sure we understand what it says. So this theorem is called Rolle's theorem, named after Michael Rolle. And so the theorem says we have a function that is continuous and differentiable. So we have a continuous function with no gaps, and it's nice and smooth. And the extra assumption is we have equality at the endpoints. So f of a is equal to f of b. And then uh, the statement here says there exists a point somewhere on the interval, right? So some c value in between a and b such that uh, this happens. So f prime of c is equal to zero. So much like the intermediate value theorem from lessons ago, this is an existence theorem. And it doesn't really tell you how to pin down the C, it just ensures that one exists. So I want to take a minute here to talk about graphically what this theorem really means. Okay, so we'll uh, take a look at a diagram here. Draw a little picture here. And I'm going to keep things uh, nice and simple. So we have a continuous function from A to B. So I'm going to label A to B, something like this. And we have f of A equaling f of B. So I'm going to intentionally make these uh, look like they have the same value. So right here at this point, we have f of A the same as f of B. And then um, the theorem is, is pretty forgiving here, right? We just have a continuous and smooth function. So you can draw almost anything here as long as it's continuous and differentiable. So I'm going to make something like this like that, and we'll call that our function f. So according to this theorem, uh, then we're guaranteed some value in between this interval a and b, where f prime of c is equal to zero. So you'll remember f prime, uh, this will give you the slope of the tangent line, so this is really telling us the slope is zero, so graphically this means we're going to have a horizontal tangent. And when you look at the graph, you could actually see a couple of places where that happens. So right up here, we can call this one of the c values, right? So if you imagine a tangent line to the graph as it changes, uh, this is the place where the tangent line is horizontal. So according to this, you could make this statement. Right? The slope of the tangent is zero there. But notice you can see another location right over here. So we could call this, um, we could call this c1, we could call this c2. Right? So there's another spot where the tangent line appears to be horizontal. So again, Rolle's theorem is not going to tell you how to get the c values. It doesn't even tell you how many you have. So just in this diagram, you could tell as long as the function has no gaps and it's nice and smooth, uh, you're guaranteed right, that this is going to occur. So you're going to have a horizontal tangent to the graph. So that's the statement of Rolle's theorem. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, the bigger theorem here. This is the main event of this lesson, and this is called the mean value theorem. So we will be able to make some connections to Rolle's theorem and talk about how uh, the theorems are really, really similar. So we'll, <clears throat> uh, we'll give this theorem first a uh, quick reading, right? So this theorem here says uh, it starts off the same way, right? The function is continuous and smooth, but you'll notice that assumption of equality at the endpoints is not there, so it gets right into the conclusion. So there must be a value c somewhere on the interval where this is going to be true. So you'll recognize uh, this statement on the right-hand side from earlier lessons, and this again is the slope of the tangent line on this side. So I'm going to do the same thing here and try to illustrate this graphically. So maybe I'll put it over here. So we have A and then also B. So I'm going to intentionally here make it look like F of A and F of B are not the same, right? So you could tell F of B is bigger than F of A. Um, but otherwise, uh, everything else is the same. We need a continuous and smooth function. So I'm going to keep things pretty simple here, maybe something like that. So this is what our function looks like. <clears throat> so what we can do here is uh, just label the endpoints. 
Right, so this point here, this is A, F of A on the left hand side, and then over here we have B, F of B. So from earlier lessons, right, this thing on the right hand side, uh, the difference in the y's over the differences uh, in the x's, this represents the steepness of the secant line. So this is the slope of the secant line going through the endpoints. So if we illustrate that visually, I'll try to draw it in here, it's uh, this thing right here. So if you calculate the slope of this line, a uh, change in y over change in x, um, the slope of that green line is given by this quantity here. So the most important part of the mean value theorem is the part that's uh, least discussed, right? So it's the equal sign in between. So this is telling you the slope of the tangent line, right? There's got to be a location somewhere on the interval from A to B where the slope of the tangent agrees with the slope of the green line. And like we saw in Rolls theorem, this is a very visual thing where you can see it. Uh, you just have to see if you can identify it. So probably in this graphic, it is around, uh, around here or so. Not quite in the middle of A and B, but pretty close, right? So if you come up to the graph here at this location and you draw a tangent line, you'll notice that the red line here is parallel to the green line. So what the mean value theorem is saying is that there is a place somewhere on the interval from A to B where the slope of the tangent line is identical to the slope of the secant line. And so in this diagram, you can see there's just one location where that happens. But similar to Rolle's theorem, it might happen in multiple locations in between A and B. So something I'd like to do also with the mean value theorem is to talk about uh, physically what it means, because um, that is a good thing to discuss. So I'm going to write down the statement so I can write a few things uh, next to it. Okay, so this is the statement here. So now if you uh, interpret the function as uh, meaning uh, or having some physical meaning, so for example, the f might represent a distance or a displacement, and then your x's might represent time, then that means your change in distance uh, divided by the change in time that has, get, has gone by, this right here on the right-hand side will represent an average rate of change. So over here, if we think about this, this will be an average velocity over the trip, or an average rate of change. And then our interpretation for the derivative, uh, this here is an instantaneous rate of change. So these are topics that we talked about before. But if you think about the physical meaning behind the mean value theorem, this is more or less saying that if you go on a trip from f of a to f of b, then that means there is going to be some average velocity that you ha have traveled over that trip. And so you can uh, think about an actual number, something like an average of 60 miles per hour, right, if you're traveling on the highway. And so what the mean value theorem is saying is that if your average velocity over the entire trip is 60 miles an hour, then that means at some instant, right, during that trip, somewhere between A and B, your instantaneous rate of change or your uh, instantaneous velocity was at one point 60 miles per hour. And that's a very sensible conclusion uh, if you stop to think about it. So um, the average rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change, there has to be some moment where these two are exactly the same, right? So these two match up perfectly. So one final thing to talk about is really the connection between uh, the mean value theorem and then also Rolle's theorem. So if you look at the diagram, right, the picture that we have for the mean value theorem, uh, it appears to be a little bit different than Rolle's theorem. So I encourage you to look at this picture carefully, and we're going to do a little translation, like a transformation on it. So I'm going to put a new set of axes here. This might be a little bit difficult to see, but I will do my best. Okay, so we can think of something like this. So if you look at the blue axes, what you might want to do is to tilt your head about 45 degrees counterclockwise. So if you think about these uh, blue axes here as a new y-axis here, and then also a new x-axis here. Okay, then when we look at these two endpoints, 
right, we can see, we can call this an f of a and an f of b. Notice that the f of a and the f of b appear equal and that your, um, your tangent line at this point now appears to be horizontal. So if f of a and f of b are the same and you come to the mean value theorem, you could tell that uh, this difference here is going to be zero. And so the mean value theorem becomes Rolle's theorem. And what this is saying is that me the mean value theorem is a, a generalization of Rolle's theorem or that Rolle's theorem is a special case. So more or less, you take the mean value theorem and you tilt it visually and it becomes Rolle's theorem.